One of the most important sets of porcelain made for America and used by George and Martha Washington has been faked. This presentation tells that story and how to determine authentic from counterfeit pieces. It is divided into three parts. What sparked my interest in whether an order Cincinnati piece was fake or not, how the puzzle was solved, and what I found out. In 2006, an order of Cincinnati soup plate sold at Christie's in Rockefeller Center, New York, for a blockbuster price of $96,000. This is no small change. I took notice. It immediately occurred to me that I had an order of Cincinnati platter that might be worth the same or more. After all, it was a platter, not a plate. Strike while the iron is hot, I said to myself, sell it. The reason I was willing to sell was that the focus of my attention at that time was Chinese export porcelain pouring vessels. In fact, I had with Craig Miller at the Indianapolis Museum of Art, a, an exhibit between 2011 and 17 on that subject. So clearly a platter is not a pouring vessel. Then my focus. Eleanor Gordon, a well-known American dealer, sold the platter to me on January 4th, 1994. I saw her ad in the magazine Antiques in late 1993. When I called her, I found that she had three Order of Cincinnati pieces for sale, two plates and one platter. It seemed to me the platter was potentially more special, so that is what I chose. It was one of the Order of Cincinnati service that George and Martha Washington used, and there are only a limited number of such porcelains. The platter was from the Dietrich Americana Foundation, now based at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. In addition, it had been exhibited at the China Trade Museum, later merged with the Peabody and then the Essex Museum to form the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. Also, it had been displayed in the Department of State rooms in Washington, DC, and it was illustrated in collecting Chinese export porcelain by Eleanor Gordon. When the platter arrived on close observation of the central area, an angel-like figure was holding a badge with an eagle suspended on it. She was blowing a horn. It was a Society of Cincinnati badge with metal that she was trumpeting. The medal represents the oldest and most influential hereditary military society in the United States. It was originated by officers of the American Revolution, including George Washington. What I would like you to know is that the ribbon portion of the badge is both blue and white, something that will be important during later discussion. The angel-like figure that held the badge was Spain, a Greek goddess representing renown. Shah chose this representation from the recently designed membership certificate for the society. Today, Winterthur Museum and Gardens near Wilmington, Delaware has more than 70 of the 302 original porcelains from the service, three of which we see here. The scarcity of these porcelains in private hands made me think a quick sale of my platter would be possible. This was confirmed when several friends told me about a prominent New York City dealer who had been trying to purchase Order of Cincinnati pieces. That was music to my ears. What I anticipated was that I would bring my platter to his shop he would scrutinize it. Then if he wanted to buy, he would cut me a check and I would deposit it same day. There would be a smile on both of our faces. 
The dealer, however, did not react as expected. He wanted to keep my platter overnight. I suspect to verify that it was genuine. This possibility stunned me that it was not genuine. I was certain it was correct and felt it would only take seconds to make that determination, not hours, much less overnight. This encounter led me to think, if Mr. Important Dealer doesn't feel comfortable in determining that an order of Cincinnati piece is authentic or not, why should anyone else? This started my search for the further information I will share with you today, how to determine if an order of Cincinnati porcelain is authentic or not. The opportunity for order of Cincinnati pieces to be faked began to take shape on June 23rd, 1975, when a Fitzhugh Border dinner service was sold in London, St. James Street, without central decoration. The set was referred to as a blank. The service sold for 1,575 pounds, then the equivalent of about $3,000 considering the exchange rate. The problem was that the perimeter was identical to the order of Cincinnati service originally purchased by George and Martha Washington. Since the central portion was undecorated, it was ripe for adornment. A likely choice for any misrepresentation would be the order of Cincinnati symbolism since this service was important historically and in demand. The added painting would produce a fake that could be sold to unsuspecting buyers and a profit could be made. One such fake is in the Reeves collection at Washington and Lee University in Lexington, Virginia. Its reverse side shows refiring, demonstrated by the gray ash not found on authentic pieces. Identifying what is a fake and what is not can be accomplished in two ways, scientifically and visually. The scientific approach is to use X-ray fluorescence, known as XRF. This simplified drawing shows the basic process. The incident X-ray beam ionizes some of the uh, sample below it, uh, causing the atoms uh, to give off their own X-ray. The energies of these X-rays are characteristic of the elements that are present. This allows the researcher to determine the elemental composition of the enamels. For example, here we see iron on the left, next molybdenum, and to the right chromium, and then nickel to the far right, all refracted. When doing X-ray fluorescence on overglazed enamels, it is important to note that X-rays are a very penetrating type of radiation, and the elements identified will be a combination of those present in the porcelain body, the glaze, and the overglaze enamel. This typically does not create an interpretation problem for two reasons. First, a background spectrum can be collected on an area free from overglaze enamel so that the elemental contribution from the porcelain body and glaze can be evaluated and subtracted from the overglaze enamel spectrum. Second, the colorants, fluxes, and associated trace elements found in overglaze enamels are usually not found in porcelain bodies or glazes. Angela Howard from Bath, England, kindly provided a plate with suspected fake Order of Cincinnati decoration to compare to my platter. The analysis was determined at the respected Winterthur House and Gardens Laboratory with Jennifer Mass, then director of the laboratory. 
This XRF graph shows the overlap spectrum of the green enamel from the suspected fake plate and my platter. The incident X-ray of the fake is shown in red and the authentic is indicated in green. The green enamel on the fake was found to be prepared with chromium as the colorant, while copper was identified on the authentic. Chromium-based green enamel formulations were introduced by Sev in 1802, demonstrating that this specific order of Cincinnati decoration, that is the one in the suspected fake, could not date to the 18th century. In addition, not on this slide, a zinc box in a high cobalt concentration on the black enamel was not consistent with 18th century Chinese export porcelain technology. Unlike the enamels which were formed, found to be out of period, the spectra from the bodies was found semi-quantitatively to contain similar rubidium concentrations, suggesting a like clay source. This finding supports a supposition that the blank order of Cincinnati porcelain sold at auction in 1975 could well be the source of the fake porcelains that were circulating. Now we move on to the visual differences. In the following slides, a genuine item is on the right and the fake is on the left. Notice that at a distance, the decoration in the two looks similar and is difficult or even impossible to distinguish. And this is where unsuspecting buyers come in where they have had little or no chance to observe a real order of Cincinnati plate or platter before. And it's easy for them to make a mistake and think they're buying a genuine when they are not. When the center enamelate is inspected closely, however, differences are apparent. The genuine item on the right is painted better on the face and wings. Also note that the copper colorant of the dress is more vibrant on the authentic than the chromium product on its counterpart. The chest of the bird contains figures delicately brushed on the authentic, which we see right here. And on the fake, we see that the heads have been enameled uh, with, in a black. Also, the ribbon is partitioned blue and white on the authentic and not on the fake. And in addition, the connecting structure between the ribbon and the eagle's head is gold on the authentic and white on the fake. There also can be pitting of the green enamel on the authentic, which we see here, not found on the fake. And this is either due to wear on the authentic because it is 200 years old plus, uh, or it can be due to the composition of the green beyond the uh, copper chromium. Also, the rim of the, of the um, two plates tells us a great deal. On the 18th century, the gold is worn off on the rim but it is virtually always present on the fake as we see here. The differences described are not just exclusive to the fake in my platter analyzed here. The similarities demonstrated were also noted visually on good photos of other order of Cincinnati porcelains, both real and not. The curators at various museums were kind enough to show me or send me. And I saw many of these porcelains in person. Duplications of authentic pieces aren't going away anytime soon. Many of them are like this 19th century Samson porcelain on the right, based on a 17th century Arita model on the left. The Samson is not meant to deceive, but to satisfy market demand.
But the enameler of the 18th century blank Order of Cincinnati set had something more sinister in mind. He tried to outsmart us. Though it took a while to figure this out, the issue is now resolved. Thank you.